Okay, we're now going to look at some examples of graphs. Our first example will be the function f of xy equals x minus y plus 1. Now there's something I forgot to say when I said what a function is, which is that when a function is defined by an equation, then by default the domain is a set of all points for which the equation defining the function is well defined. So here the domain is all of R2 because the expression x minus y plus 1 is well defined for any x and y. In general, if you take square roots or to do division, then it's sometimes not always well defined. We'll see examples of that later. Okay, so the graph of this function is the surface where z equals f of xy, which means that z equals x minus y plus 1. Now, we can see just from the form of this equation that this is a plane. And we can try to sketch it. It's a little tricky to sketch, um, but let's give it a try. So along the line y equals x, z is equal to minus 1. So let's draw that. Um, sorry, z is equal to plus 1. So here's the line y equals x. and z equals 1. Now if y equals x plus 1, then z equals 0. So that's sort of down like this. So this is in the xy plane. In general we get a plane sort of going down like this. This is not a very good drawing. It's a little, it's a little hard to draw, as of course we always lose information when we project from three dimensions to two dimensions. Anyhow, in general, the graph of a linear function so a linear function is a function of the form f of xy equals ax plus by plus c where a, b, and c are constants. So the graph of a linear function is a plane. z equals ax plus by plus c. Okay. Our next example is the function f of xy equals the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. So let's first figure out what's the domain. Well, the domain is the set of all points for which this is defined, and we can't take a negative square root. Well, of course, you can take a square, negative square root if you use complex numbers, but our functions are supposed to be real valued. So for this to be a well-defined real number, the expression in the square root cannot be negative. So the domain is a set of all points x, y, such that x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. And this domain is a disk of radius 3 centered at the origin. Now the graph is the surface z equals the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. Now to draw a picture, we can first manipulate the equation a little bit to better understand it. So if we square both sides, we get the equation z squared equals 9 minus x squared minus y squared, which we can rewrite as x squared 
plus y squared plus z squared equals 9. Now, this equation describes a sphere of radius 3 centered at the origin. However, the graph is not the whole sphere. So the graph is where z equals square root of blah blah blah, and in a formula like this, we always mean that we take the positive square root. Now, if you have this equation here, z squared, so after squaring both sides, you get the equation z squared equals blah blah blah, that has two solutions for z. z could be plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared minus y squared. So that gives you two points, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. But the one that we want for our actual function is just the one in the northern hemisphere. So the graph is just the upper half of the sphere. So it's the set of points where x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 9 and z is greater than or equal to 0. So we can draw it like this. There it is. Now notice, note the, the whole sphere can't be the graph of any function. Why not? Well, we have an analog of the vertical line test in this situation. So if we draw a vertical line, so a line where x and y are fixed and only the z-coordinate changes, then that vertical line can intersect the graph at at most one point. Because for any given x and y, a function can only have a single value. If we had the whole sphere, then that would fail the vertical line test because the vertical line I just drew would intersect the sphere in two points, one in the northern hemisphere and one in the southern hemisphere. So our next example is the function f of xy equals 1 over x squared plus y squared. Now what's the domain of this? Well, this formula is well defined as long as we don't divide by 0. And x squared plus y squared is 0 only at the origin. So the domain is all of R2 <clears throat> except the origin. And the fancy notation for this is we have the set R2 minus the set consisting of the single point 0, 0. Okay, now what is this graph going to look like? Well, notice that on a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared, f is a constant, namely 1 over r squared. And on large circles, f is small, so as r gets very big, f goes to 0, and on small circles, f is large. So as x, y approaches the origin, f goes to infinity, or we could say f blows up. So the graph is going to look like this. Let's draw the surface in red. 
going to look something like this. So over a circle of radius r in the xy plane, we have a circle whose height is 1 over r squared in the graph. And as we go away from the origin in the xy plane, f goes to 0. And as we go towards the origin, f gets arbitrarily large, and that's why it fails to be well-defined at the origin.